This is the intro to module two, CSR in operations. In CSR in operations, we want to focus on the supply chain and have the supply chain be the, the center of different CSR aspects. You can look at the whole system and go in in different parts of the system and optimize it in a sustainable manner. In lecture 2.1, we'll explain the supply chain. The supply chain is the area that has the biggest direct impact on sustainability, since all the things we make and the way we make them affect our natural and social resources. You should, um, from this lecture, you should get an understanding of the elements in a classical supply chain and some of the components that we uh, that can be worked with and improved when consider uh, considering sustainability and implementing of CSR standards. We'll start with uh, an illustration of a classical supply chain. Just before illustrating the supply chain, I would like to point you to chapter 12 in the Sustainable MBA. This chapter supports uh, the operations and supply chain issues. Um, again, it's not necessary that you read it. You can follow the lecture without, but it will also give you more depth if you do choose to read it. All right, here I'm going to illustrate the supply chain. Uh, a very classical, simple way of illustrating the whole system. We have our company. This is our starting point. <clears throat> company. We see everything from this perspective. For the company to be able to do what they do, they need suppliers. And this can be all kind of suppliers. They feed different things into this, to this uh, system or into our company. Part of suppliers is raw material. Everything comes from a beginning somewhere, from the earth, from farmers making crops or whatever. They deliver in to either the suppliers that does things, and in some cases, depending on what our company is doing, also directly to our company. In the other end of the system, we need things to be distributed out. And we have a range of distributors, and they can be in different layers out here. Of course, this goes for all physical products. We need to move our product out. <clears throat> and from distribution, we need it to finally be with our end consumer. The end consumer can be people, um, ordinary people like you and me buying our different things every day. It can be other companies as well. All depends what we do. The point is it's end, con end consumers. So this is the very basic system we are operating in. This system creates different, different things come out of it apart from what we produce. We have the whole system produces waste. There's different levels of waste coming from the whole system. It also, the whole system takes energy, energy coming in, and that's also the whole system. There are all kinds of resources going into the system as well out here as natural resources, but also human resources, etc. Needless to say, the whole thing is being transported through the system as well. From a CSR perspective or from a sustainability perspective, we can look at this whole system and we can start to do different things that makes it more sustainable or makes it more, I would claim, a better system. So um, we can start looking at the materials we put into the system. Where do they come from? What do we do to them? Are they toxic? or whatever happens with it. We can start to uh, look at the way we do our product designs. Maybe they can, our products can be designed in a way that uses less energy or are smarter put together in different ways. And um, also, I said transportation, we also need packaging in the whole system. So we can start to look at the packaging we do. We wrap, we do different things 
to make it make it uh, work. And finally, it's being consumed out here in the end, and it becomes uh, some waste after it, or there's a product that we may not know what we, maybe we can reuse that and, um, and put it back, even put it back into our system for new, uh, new resources. This can also happen with the waste. We can actually look into reusing our waste. This is a simplification of the supply chain channel and the whole system that can be a good basis for sustainability CSR thinking. After this overview, we'll um, go into a few of the elements, starting with suppliers. Um, today, there's a general knowledge that companies are also accountable to their stakeholders and the public for activities throughout, not just their own little um, business, but the whole supply chain, including actions of their suppliers. So you can't close your eyes for what is happening with, with one of your suppliers somewhere else. So it will affect your business as well. But by working closely with their suppliers, company can get to understand the environmental and social impact their products and services have throughout their production cycle. So based on this and by working uh, together, they can, uh, you as a company can also explore uh, how to create better products. Uh, here are some aspects to consider. Work with responsible suppliers. Make demands to your suppliers. Uh, existing suppliers or new suppliers. Integrate a CSR criteria into the supplier contracts. Create a, a policy for improving triple bottom line performance of your suppliers. Some of the above uh, will, will also often be put in a code of conduct, co code of conduct towards the suppliers. Work with the suppliers to help them uh, develop their CSR actions and sustainability strategies. They meet a lot of demands and maybe say, hey, we are doing the best we can and we are operating on, on all uh, with these things. Um, this is all we can do. Maybe you with simple means can go in and help and work with how they can improve in some aspects they, they just don't uh, know about. Supplier handling. Uh, when handling the supplier, be, be clear, consistent, and as simple as possible in your demands. Um, can be tricky, but, but at least try. Uh, remember that your suppliers have many different clients, and all of the clients can have different demands. So it can be very complex for a supplier to handle all the criteria that face them. Uh, conduct an assessment of the supplier supplier's current sustainability performance and again in co collaboration maybe you can all learn from such an assessment and have a clear plan for follow-up how you're going to follow up on what your supplier uh, is actually doing finally it's also quite a good idea to consider uh, and support local suppliers and we'll get more into this Remember also, this is a very big area, so take it step by step and do not expect to do everything at once. Uh, take it easy. When local suppliers were mentioned, it also has to do with transportation. One thing is that your supplier is close to you, so you can be in maybe an easier contact, you can visit them more often, etc. Uh, but also transportation-wise. Uh, transportation is a very resource-heavy uh, uh, business and part of the business. It's a lot of energy goes into uh, this part of our businesses. So it's worth optimizing the company's transportation. Both, and there's two ways, more or less, minimize your transportation need but also improve the transportation uh, needed. So uh, this can mean locally, local sourcing, but also when we talk about improve the transportation needed, it's in terms of energy uh, reduction and, um, and what we need to transport, but, but a lot of focus on energy reduction. Next aspect is resources. Um, no resource are endless. And um, 
eventually they will run out. Of course, our Earth regenerates uh, resources, but if we just consume more and more, the Earth can't provide it. And actually, it is the situation today that our planet cannot regenerate all the resources we take out. Um, some resources are getting scarce, and it means, of course, that prices go up, thus the cost for uh, the company go up, and eventually the resource is gone. Uh, there is a growing international movement focusing on sustainable consumption and production. And the idea is that natural resources, and basically all resources, can be used more efficiently. It's not just about consuming and producing less, but also consuming and producing differently. Finally, there's waste. And uh, today we tend to think of waste as a resource. Changing the way we understand waste can benefit and create a lot of value. In uh, rethinking waste management, companies should first identify what the waste streams are in their, uh, in their supply chain and how much waste is being generated throughout the, the life cycle and supply chain, all the way from raw material to packaging. Um, when you have an idea about all the waste that's being created throughout your system, um, there's different uh, ways to go. You can prevent creating waste altogether. Um, you can reduce the waste that is being created. You can recycle and reuse the waste. And some waste, there will be some waste, and then you can improve uh, disposal and uh, the monitoring of, uh, of this disposal. Today waste is actually becoming a big, big business and in some cases you will find that you can be paid from other companies that can use your waste as new resources. So they will pay to come and pick up your waste. So uh, new things is happening here. Next, I'll give an example of some of the things uh, I've just presented. An example is a computer. Uh, all kinds of materials go into creating this. One of the important materials is a metal. Um, and the metal, some of the metals in here are quite scarce. So we run out eventually, or the price is increasing. Um, so that's one problem. Another uh, issue is um, at a certain point in time, I'm going to change this computer to another computer, a new device. And then what happens to it? Will I throw it out on a, on a waste dump? Um, or could we think smart and reuse this computer, take it apart and use the different materials, the scarce metal, to create new computers? With this computer example, we end this lecture. We stay within the supply chain operation area in the next lecture.